I can bench press a car. I can climb up the side of a wall, fight 20 guys to a standstill, swing across chasms 30 stories deep, feel a bullet coming my way, and move fast enough to get clear. But something in her makes me gentle, makes me shy, makes me strong, makes me happy to be alive. And maybe that's it. Maybe that's what it really comes down to. She makes me, makes me whole. She completes me. So here's the thing, God. I know I complain a lot, and I know that you and me, we've got issues. But right now, just for tonight, thank you for her. Thank you. As you can see, there was some structural damage done by the invading frost giants. But no casualties, right? I heard you shifted the entire population to a limbo dimension. Even house pets. Nice work, Otto. Real first-class heroing. Is that a word? I care nothing for your praise. What are you doing here, if not spying on me? Well, I know sometimes when I finish a big series of fights, I kind of experience a letdown. You know, sort of a, why am I doing this? I suck. And by the time Uncle Ben was my age, he was married and owned a home. You know, that kind of feeling. And hey, that's perfectly normal. It's exhaustion, stress, and the insecurities we all have bubbling up. You just gotta put one web in front of the other and, you know, hang in there. Is your entire vocabulary comprised of empty platitudes? Your inner voice is right, fool. Someone of your power and intellect should own a home by now, several. Good heavens, man. You could have a Nobel Prize if you weren't such a navel-gazing child, leaping around like a clown for the approval of a complete strangers. Okay, maybe talking about me was a bad idea, because I am gonna need a lot of therapy now, and I can't afford it. Look, I know I suck at this, but Anna Maria's worried about you. She said you've been really hard on yourself. Look, existential crises are my specialty. I have three before my morning bagel. But you, you always had a very healthy ego. And you've been doing great. So, seeing as I'm obviously not good at the delicate approach, I'm just gonna ask, what's wrong? I, I, in Miramar, during the War of the Realms, 34 people were killed. In Redwood City, 21. And that is merely the immediate area. Thousands dead in the United States alone. And these ignorant sheep want to give me giant keys? It's foolish, is all. And Otto Octavius has no time for fools. Oh. Hey, now I get it. Look, Otto, spare me your cliches about power and responsibility and the inevitable caveats that allow you to rationalize your failures. I am well aware that you cannot save everyone, but I am Otto Octavius, one of the finest minds on this earth. I should have thought of something. Okay. No more advice from me. I will grant you I'm not a therapist. Look, I'm barely a motivational poster of a cat. And you're older than me. You have more experience. But I have been doing this longer. I mean, from the good guy side of things. And there's one thing that I can tell you for sure. The way you feel right now, that means you're doing it right. So give yourself a break, Otto. You might just have a future in this. So, this is gonna be quick. Which would you prefer, to be unconscious or insulted? Oh my god, shut up! For once in your life, just... He's dead, okay? Are you happy? I helped him leave the hospital so he could die the way he wanted to. Not waiting for for cops to try and take him away. I know you think my life, 
This role is to just beat up supervillains. But it can't be that. It's... I have to make decisions all the time. What's best, what helps, and yeah, this time it was to help another human being face their mortality and... and... Hope you were watching, Uncle Ben. Cause I did that for you. I kept everyone safe. I kept them from being scared. And I made it a little fun. It doesn't matter that most of them wouldn't have lifted a finger for Peter Parker. That's not why you do it. You do it because it's the right thing to do. Because it's what you would have done. You were more than a father to me, Ben Parker. More than a role model. You were my hero. And I'm the one Jameson's paper plays up as the biggest menace to mankind since the last Ice Age. Listen, Avenger. Thanks for the save a few minutes ago. But you can go stuff it. Now you listen, Spider-Man. Stark asked me to protect that fuel. And because you blew it, you decided you needed a Fall Guy. Awfully convenient that I just happened along, wasn't it? All I want is an answer to one question, Wallcrawler. Did you ever see this note before? Sure, on every old Perry Mason show. This is no joke, Spider-Man. Look, I've fought beside you. You even saved my life along with the other Avengers. But you've always been a loner. I can't think of anyone who can claim to really know you. Well, maybe that's because it's no one's business, Shellhead. I mean, of all the Avengers, it's you and Thor that get me the most. The high and mighty founding fathers of a venerable old team. Preaching about respecting each other's privacy. And then coming down on me because I like to hold on to mine. Ask the Vision, or the Scarlet Witch, or Moon Dragon, which side I'm on, pal. And then take your suspicions and buzz off. All my life, I've dreaded having that conversation. I've lived in fear of it for years. Years. For a conversation that took a little under three hours. And I'm so proud of her. She's so strong. So strong. For all the years I wore this, I always felt as if I was hiding more than my name. I was hiding who I was. Hiding from the world. From myself. And from her. For the first time, as I put it on, I feel not confined. But free. She's given me that freedom. And I know it cost her. However much she put on a brave face, I know this must have cost her terribly. And I'll make that up to her. Somehow. Because May is right. Our great power, and our great responsibility, is to one another. And I won't lie to her again. I won't let her down. Ever. Haven't been back here since that night. And that very first confrontation with my better half. The original Peter Parker. The so-called real Spider-Man. I still don't remember much between the explosion at the stadium and waking up at the foot of the smokestack. But I always figured that he brought me here for some reason. I can't help wondering if Peter ever faced a moment like this. If he ever saw his entire life reduced to a single object, that just might be an answered prayer. And I wonder if it scared him half as much as me. Jack sacrificed himself to share the secret. Or did he? This computer disk could hold a miracle. New evidence that I'm actually the one true Peter Parker. Or it could be another one of the Jackal's sick jokes. After all these years away, all the dreams and the doubts, I still can't help but wonder what Peter would have done. But it really doesn't matter. Because I'm not Peter Parker. Not that Peter Parker. Not anymore. And Ben Riley no longer needs validation from anything, anybody, but me. Jackal only reminded me of that again tonight. My own rootless existence, each and every friend and foe along the way, has long since proven that life is in the living. I will do what's necessary to keep people safe. I'm in control of my life. I decide what happens next. No one else. Truth is, when I'm honest with myself, I need Spider-Man. More than anyone. So, let's run a summary of the week's work, shall we? Saw MJ in California, but didn't get her back. Check. 
I saw Doc Ock in California. Beat the guy who stole his tech. Didn't get Ock himself. Check. While I was in California, I forgot to send my check to the telephone company. And even though it's only a day late, they've cut off my long-distance service. Again. While I was in California, I also didn't get around to playing my usual seven numbers in the lotto. Five bucks, seven numbers, always the same. And the one week I didn't play, my number came up. Check. I look at it all. I look for the common denominator. And you know, I think I've figured out what the problem is. The problem is California. Which probably makes me the last guy in the country to finally figure that one out. Another cold October rain in New York. What else is new? The way my life has gone? I've probably got my very own personal rain club that follows me like a curse wherever I go. Things weren't always this bad. It seems like a dozen lifetimes ago. But when I was younger, when I was Peter Parker, life was great. A kid couldn't ask for a kinder or more giving set of parents, real or otherwise, than my Aunt May and Uncle Ben. They devoted their lives to raising me, poor as they were. They gave me the best education and moral values. Those were the days. But then the curse reared its ugly head. I was still in high school when that blasted, irradiated spider bit me. I went from being class weakling and egghead to maybe the most unique person on earth. I even invented some wristbands that could shoot a synthetic web line and a costume to match. I called myself Spider-Man and figured I could make some money in the entertainment biz to help support us all. I was a real hotshot, all right. Too cool to stop a burglar on the set of a show I appeared on. Too stupid to do the right thing. And later, when my Uncle Ben was murdered, and I caught the guy who did it, I saw it was him. The man I could have stopped, and that turned out to be the ultimate lesson in responsibility. And Spider-Man went from showman to hero. For the first couple of years, I battled one loony after another. Vulture, Craven, Rhino, Doc Ock, none of them could beat me. But the Green Goblin forced me to pay the ultimate price when he killed the love of my life. Gwen Stacy, I should have known then death would always follow me. That in some way, I was cursed. My life went haywire when I discovered the Jackal had cloned Gwen and me. My clone, my identical genetic duplicate, beat me, thought I was dead, and tossed me down a chimney, and carried on my life as Peter Parker and Spider-Man. But I survived, and while he was off knocking heads with the likes of Venom and Carnage, and marrying Mary Jane Watson, I spent five lonely years wandering America as Ben Riley. When I heard Aunt May was dying, I was drawn back. I even helped Spider-Man fight the Jackal, and the newspapers gave me the name Scarlet Spider. At first, we all thought I was the clone, until we discovered otherwise, and all our lives were turned upside down again. For me, it was bittersweet. Good to find out that I was the real one but a kick in the butt to find out I'd lost five years. So, Peter and Mary Jane left town, and I realized that even though I've been gone, New York is home. I've realized other things too. Someone else may live out Peter Parker's life, but there's work to be done. That ultimate lesson in responsibility is as valid today as when Uncle Ben died. The world needs heroes. There are people who still need help and I can give it to them. That's not a curse. It's what I'm all about. Now and forever, I am the one and only Spider-Man. You are so fat that when you cut yourself shaving, marshmallow fluff comes out. No? Okay, how about this one? You are so fat that your high school yearbook photo was taken from a helicopter. Ooh, tough room. Okay, how about you are so fat that when you get on a scale, it says, one at a time. She's a good woman. You know, sometimes I think there isn't a sonar in existence that can sound out the depth of her compassion. But right now, that isn't what I need. What I need is to get away. And up and out. Just out. I don't even care where I go, I just want to go. And I'm not going to stop until I get tired.
Unfortunately, it takes a real long time for me to get tired. By that time, I could be in New Jersey. And I don't even know anyone in New Jersey. And here's another thing. When I designed this suit, why the heck didn't I design it with pockets? Anything I carry, I gotta carry it in a web pouch. The FF have pockets in their uniforms. Reed Richards alone are huge. But that's because he has to carry trans-dimensional mega doodads and whirly dudes in them. Or maybe he's just real happy to see Sue. Of course, if I had pockets, stuff would fall out of them every time I did this. Okay, so maybe I could have pockets with zippers. Hey, maybe Velcro. Yeah, that'd work. I'd be creeping up behind somebody and have to get something out. Zip? Hey, what's that smear on the wall, Mommy? Oh, that used to be Spider-Man, honey. What killed him? A zipper. Some said Velcro, but the Daily Bugle said it was a zipper, and I believe the Bugle. Wow, he must have been real stupid, huh? Yes, honey, he was. Ah, <sighs> why the heck am I thinking about pockets anyway? Because it's easier than thinking about my life? And why would that bother you, Peter? Oh, no reason. Everything's fine. Everything is just ducky. Except that whenever I'm really bugged about something and I really need to go pound a bad guy, there's never a bad guy around. But whenever I'm in a really good mood, yeah, like that happens more than twice a year, there's always four or five bad guys, or a sinister six, or seven, or nineteen, waiting to bust my chops and ruin my day and... Bugged. Spider-Man. <laughs> I made it funny. Ooh. Hmm. Maybe I'd better go now. I'm sorry? What do I think of Spider-Man? Uh, I feel like I have a conflict of interest. I actually used to take pictures of him for a newspaper. He kind of helped me pay my rent for years. Got to eventually repay him by hiring him to be my, well, my bodyguard. But still, I think Spider-Man is, he's a good guy, mostly. He tries to do the right thing, and, you know, hopefully people see that. But also, he's human. He makes mistakes, he... He can't save everyone. So, when I think of Spider-Man, I guess I... I think of the weight of that. That he keeps going despite the failures, knowing, hoping, ultimately, that he's helping people. He's been doing this for a long time, but still. When I think of Spider-Man, I think, no matter what, he's never going to stop trying. During Civil War, I told Cap and Iron Man to go fuck themselves. Moon Knight works alone. I don't do team-ups. You're in a team-up right now. Shut up, Spider-Man. I can't believe I'm actually breaking into a morgue. Next thing you know, I'll be digging up graves. I'll make this quick. As soon as I see the mask, I'll know if it was one of mine. Or if it's a fake. All I gotta do is find the right body. Whoops, that's not it. I'm sorry. Alright, this looks like it could be... Holy! It's real! It's... real. Now what? What does this mean? Do I call Peter Parker in Portland and drag him into this? No. He and Mary Jane deserve to live in peace. There's no sense in getting him all stirred up when I don't even have any answers myself. And I'm not gonna find him here if I leave chalk face for others to examine. Somehow, I have to solve this myself. It sounds kind of sick and gross, but I know what I have to do. I can't wait to see tomorrow's bugle. Jonah's gonna skewer me major league. And this time, I think I deserve it. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Hero, web slinger, and grave robber. I mean, I've seen and done some pretty weird things in this hero game, but hauling around the bag of bones is giving me the creeps.